Approximately 3% of babies are little stinkers and they are bum down or feet down at 37 weeks instead of head down. We've got three types of breech babies. One is a complete breech where their legs are bent and their feet are sort of at the same level as their bum and they're trying to come through like that. Then there is a footling breech. That's when both feet are coming through or one is bent and one is coming through first. That's the presenting part. And then you have a frank breech. These are the ones where when they are delivered, their legs are like this. Their legs are both bent up and it is their bum that is the presenting part coming through the pelvis. What are your options for delivering a baby who's not head down? Well, you've got three of them. The first one is a scheduled C-section and this one is the most common. The second option is a vaginal breech delivery and your third option is to try to turn baby around so that they are head down. Now there is a procedure to try to turn baby head down from breech and it is known as external cephalic version or ECV. Now there are a number of situations where you would not be a candidate for ECV and they're going to include if you are carrying multiple babies, if you have a low level of amniotic fluid, if your baby has a very high or a very low heart rate, if you have an abnormally shaped uterus, if you've had bleeding in the pregnancy, if you have a low lying placenta, or if you have very very high blood pressure or preeclampsia. ECV is usually done in pregnancy at 37 weeks. At 36 weeks, baby still has a chance to turn on its own, but by 38 weeks, they're kind of running out of room to make that turn on their own. So they're finding that 37 weeks is the sweet spot. The procedure of ECV is gonna start with a bedside ultrasound, and that way your provider knows what position baby's in before we start with the procedure. Then the provider is gonna put one hand on baby's rump or bum, one hand on baby's head, and with pressure, quite firm pressure, is going to turn baby and continue to turn baby and work on baby until baby is hopefully in a head down position. They might use the ultrasound in between turns and pushes to make sure that things are going well. Now you're gonna be monitored while the procedure is ongoing to make sure that baby's heart rate is tolerating that manual manipulation. Following ECV, you will also have continuous fetal heart rate monitoring for a set amount of time to make sure that nothing is going to happen following the procedure. At my site, ECV is done in the operating room and it's done under epidural anesthesia because this procedure can be very uncomfortable. However, this does not seem to be the standard of care across all sites. Some sites do no pain control, some sites offer medication to try to relax you, some sites do epidural anesthesia. If you guess that there are risks to ECV, you'd be right. There are three of them. One is that it can cause baby's heart rate to go abnormally high or abnormally low from the stress of the procedure. Another one is that it can actually cause tearing of the placenta from the force used to turn baby. And the last one, which may not be bad unless baby is not in an optimal position, is that you could actually go into labor. It's important to note that sites that don't have the capability to perform an emergency C-section will not offer ECB. Studies are showing success rates of ECB to be around 45 to 65%, with only a small two to 3% of those babies continuing to be stinkers and flipping back around if the ECB was successful.